Hello, it's Jesse here, and welcome back to Jesse's Vintage Garage, and we're going to be working on the Mark III, 1975 Norton Mark III. We've taken some stuff apart so far here, and uh, we're getting ready to, to work on the cradle here. We took the Z, Z plates off, and and we, uh, we're going to put the boots on, get this adjusted, get the boots on, and put the axle that goes through there. With the Z plates reinstalled, and that's kind of what the plan was. Yeah, and then we also got to put the Welch plugs in and the in the the felt, and this is filled with with uh, heavy grease. It's supposed to have 140 grease. I... The book don't tell you about this, but I put a I put a hundred percent silicone grease. I just I just give it a light coat inside of this boot everywhere and the reason I do that is so that the, this rubber boot don't break down and crack and split and dry out real bad and uh, I mean you don't you don't cake it in there you just just make it just make it wet basically You don't put it on the outside, you just put it on the inside of the boot, everywhere. And so it's all wet. And don't use petroleum based? And you don't use petroleum based because petroleum, this, this is, it's actually a dielectric grease, but it's 100% silicone. And silicone won't break down rubber. So, or whatever this is. And so, because of that, that's what I use. These are kind of tricky to get on too. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta taking them and just pop them on there but sometimes they don't just pop on and you don't want to start using screwdrivers and stuff rip them and cut them yeah so Get him. Oh, come on. I don't want to stay, so there it goes. And I'll kind of slowly push that baby on there. There it goes. Okay. There we are. There it is. We're also going to have to pop it back off there to set this. Yeah. So. So pretty much this is a seal like. To to protect this open right here. Yeah, keep keep dirt and stuff out. This side is non-adjustable. This side turns all the way until it goes up to the to the abutment on the inside and there's an Allen screw and it'll be located somewhere. In this particular case it's over here. And there you go. See it? Yeah. yeah. And then you tighten it so that it doesn't move again. So, and then this side over here with all the holes in it is the adjustment side. And so that's, now, <clears throat> since this is the adjustment side on the rear, when you put the front one in, the adjustment side will be on this side. So they're on opposite sides. 
I don't know why they did that, but that's the way it is, and that's the way I keep it. So. And it goes all the way up against there like that and sits up seats. Nice. Just like that. And it's on there. And it sits there. Now we're going to lift this up and push it through there and push a bolt through there. Find some anti-seats on the, on the through bolt. Yeah, just a little here and there. What'll happen to this bolt? It, they get. I've seen them when you go to replace the the ISOs in these things. They'll be completely seized up inside of there for moisture and corrosion. And if you don't put something like this on it, somewhere, sometime down the road, you're gonna have trouble. Got the, I got the frame from falling, <laughs> so yeah, let's see if we can get it through there. Towards me. It's gotta go this forward way. and now up, now straight up. Right there. You're partially through. There it is. There you are. Okay. All right, I'm selling the Z plate here. Reverse it. Spacer. Spacer, whatever. <laughs> Same difference. That goes in. Now we get a washer. Lock washer. And a nut. And a nut. Okay, put the bushing on. He's on.
There we go. We got both of them on now. I just need to what, adjust it and tighten them up then, or? Yes, we're going to tighten them up. We're going to have to pop this one back off so we can get a feeler gauge in there after we get this snug up. But before I do that, I want to hook these shocks back up. Well, it's coming together there. <laughs> so let's go into adjusting that and tightening that up that axle there. Yeah. Close to snug or somewhat snug? Yeah. And we're close. It's a matter of, uh, we're going to have to torque it in order to get it completely correct. So, so according to the book, it's one and a half holes. Yeah, so we can. From tight? Yeah, from tight. Well. I don't know if you want to call it tight or if it's just snug. So I have from snug. Okay, there's there. There's one. And then we can tighten it up and find out what we got. We're either going to be right or we're going to be wrong. We're supposed to tighten this. All right, so there's 30 foot pounds. Well, it still moves. Let's see what we got. Now's the time to do it. too tight. What's the gap we're looking for here? Well, somewhere between 6 and 10. I think 
can't get six in it. So we're too tight. See, we got a six can go in there. Yeah, six bits, barely. Barely. Okay, so I've got to go a little more. Trying to get the back into it right at six thousandths, and I can just get it in there. Let's try. Let's try an eight. See, I'd have to. You can't really. I, I can't get it really in there. So, All it's, right. it's between. Yeah, it's looking good. So yeah. With six to ten, you rarely have it tight, so there we are. So now we're gonna double check it because I torqued it. Oh because yeah. Because it can it can affect it. Because I did get some more out of it. I didn't I tried not to over tighten it. Let's see. So six goes in there? Yep. Yep, really good. And see, I can move it. And that's what it's supposed to do. Great. We got the swing arm taken out and we're working on replacing the seals in the swing arm. And then we'll work on putting it back in the cradle and going from there. We got the swing arm out here on the Mark III and we're, we're going to work on replacing these seals here. We can tell that these are wore out pretty bad. Um, because we got some new ones here and this is what they're supposed to look like. And so we got to press these bushings out and then put these on there and press them back in. Um, this is the came from Andover Norton and uh, it's a part number there for it so anyways now yeah, we're gonna be working on that here coming up all right let's go we're gonna try to press these out it over to the other side and work on putting them back in. We got the bronze bushing out and we got it all cleaned up really nice and then we're going to hurry up and put the the new seal on here and then press it back in right away so we don't get them mixed up or anything. And the original one that came out was a little bit different. <clears throat> it had uh it didn't have rubber inside here. It was just still metal. But this is still metal too. But it's got a rubber uh, extra seal right through here possibly. Because the, the flange part on here goes into this groove here. So it helps seal. There we go, we got it. Now we're pressing out the other side. And we'll uh, be able to press the new one in this side. There we 
are. We got the other bushing all cleaned up. Um, what I mean by cleaned up is I wiped it off. This is all, you don't really use solvent on these. They're oil impregnated uh, bronze bushings. And this one here, um, actually they're both really nice on the inside. So what do you think of that? I think it just looks pretty good. Has some like residue left Stains over from, from that black plastic. Yeah, from the other different one. And then we'll just put the new uh, new seal on. With the the swing arm here, to having a new one in there, you can I can actually feel. I don't know if you can see it, but I can actually feel this this lip is actually proud against this. The original one that was wore out was like flush, if not under. So then it would never it would never seal if we would have tried it. So we're gonna get this in here and get this swing arm back into the cradle and then go from there. But right now we're gonna work on putting this last bushing in. Oh, there we are. We got it all ready to go back into the cradle now. There we are working on putting the swing arm in. Just gonna slide it in there. Good time. It's going, but I'm really having to push hard. All right, now the, the pin is close. Looks like I got to go higher. These two notches got to line up with these two pin holes. There's the pin holes. Yeah. And the notches are right there. Yeah, I don't know exactly where it needs to be. Boy. It looks like it's there. And there's the um, holes there. Is that, hold, hold the swing arm. No, the swing arm. Okay, so here we go. We got one of the pins in. No, or, we don't. Anyway, we got, got it to where it's lined up anyway. <laughs> I got the, the pin wasn't in right or something, so. So with them slots on the axle or the pin part, you gotta make that an opening there and then these little pins that have a taper on them slide down inside there. Yeah, they're tapered on one side. Yep. That's what they look like. And you run them down in there and they wedge into that groove, locking that pin from rotating. There you go. Yep, there's like a little rubber cap that goes out later. Underneath, yeah, there's a fiber washer underneath and a hex nut that holds it down, tightens it up, pulling it all the way in, locking that pin still. So, 
fiber washer first. You're gonna have to lift it up. Okay. Fiber washer first. I think I need to pack right now. That one, this one went real easy. This one isn't. Legend not right? Swap them. Maybe the one yeah. will fit over there better than it will over here. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> okay, so that was a good one. Oh, there it went. Yeah. It went down in there farther. Well, there we go. <laughs> sure we're centered on both sides. I want to see where oh. we're at here. We're just proud of the bushing. Oh yeah, the fiber washers and yeah. This is it just fiber washer or hex nut? I got a lock washer too. There's a, there's oh, a washer, washer that there's a fiber washer first, then a flat washer so that the washer doesn't curl or and then a self locking nut. Take a little bit. Plus, I want to look up what the torque factor is on this. We got the book here out for the, the spindle lock pins, is what they call it, on that swing arm uh, axle there. Um, it talks here it's all the spindle lock pins with a tapered flat facing forward, which we did. Cut the pins down with a soft mallet to engage the notches into spindle. Install the washers and screw on the nuts, drawing the pins down into place. Install the rubber plugs into the lock pin bores. Well, we don't see a torque spec there. It just says to tighten it, drawing it in. And we looked at the Andover Norton uh, paperwork and we didn't see nothing talking about to lock, spin the lock pin nut or any of that kind of stuff. So it's like a 5 16 nut. So I'll probably just torque it down no, to- it's a quarter. Oh, it's a quarter? Yep. It looked quarter like it was 28. bigger than that. <laughs> no, no, quarter 28. Okay, quarter 28. So then that means it's like- That'd be about anywhere from eight to 12 foot pounds. I was gonna say 10, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. And we might just, we might put some inch bounds on it, make them equal. So what we got, so you can see it from here, we got, uh, it's harder to see it upside down, but it's the, fi it's the fiber washer, the steel washer, and then the nut. So we're going to torque it down to 12 foot pounds. Got the shocks back on there to stabilize the swing arm when it goes to torque this down. We got it set for uh, 120 inch pounds. That'd be 10 foot pounds. We'll see what that feels like.
We can always go up from there. That nut was a long way from there. I think eight would be enough. It's pulling a taper tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. Right. And I'm not so sure it's necessary. That's probably why it doesn't specify a torque, but probably they should do that so some people don't leave it loose. <laughs> you know what I mean, though. Uh, all jokes aside, but what's eight? What's um, eight? Twelve times eight. I'm not sure offhand. Uh, it'd be ninety-six for twelve times eight. So Let's see what that looks like. You probably already passed it. There's a hundred. So. Here's eight. Would that be ninety-eight? Ninety-six. Huh? That eight means ninety-eight, right? Yeah, that would be uh, on there. Yep. Ninety-six would be ninety-six. No, just a, yep. Sometimes the markings on the torque wrenches yeah. are like fives or something, but. So eight, eight foot pounds. Feels really tight. Here's the Welsh plugs that we're gonna be putting in the swing arm and then the felts. So this one gets all the all the felts get soaked up with oil. Uh, what was the original oil type? 140. 140 weight. And then uh, they once they're all soaked, you stick this one in and then you stack this one on top of it. And you put on this plug, the Welsh plug, and then when you have that in there, you smack it until it forms to the inside of the... Seals it, flattens it. Yeah, it kind of locks wow, in place. Somewhat. So, But this is pretty much the best way to get the oil in there to begin with because if you do this right the first time, then you'll have, you'll have a easier... You won't be able to get the oil in there later, right? Right. So <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say. So, all right, so anyway... We're going to use some really thick uh, gear oil, and uh, we'll be good. So we got the felt pieces in there soaking in the oil. Might have to, might take a little while, or? Yeah, I'm going to coat them good. Now they absorb some of that oil up, and then... Yeah, so once we get these in, then we can actually load the swing arm with oil, right? Yep. There we are. Let it sit for a while. Yeah, we're... All right, it's been sitting for a while, 20 minutes or so. And we can tell that it's uh, these 
pieces of felt have absorbed a lot of oil. So I think I'm about ready to put these together now. No, don't exactly just slide right in there. <laughs> I need a needle nose. Hmm. There it's going. Yeah, you got to thread it in. You see a little bit better grip on it or something. Yeah. Now we want to make sure it sits out just a little bit because we got to make sure the other felt touches this felt. Yeah. That's a round flat one you're putting in now? Yep. Ooh. Rank. I don't know if I dented it too much. I don't think so. But it's no, with it pushes the outside out. Then it actually grips onto the swing arm that way. Yeah. In theory. Yep. Looks like it happened this time too. So we're going to go to the other side, lay it on its side and fill it up with oil. And do the same thing. Then smack it in. Yeah, we want to make sure it's got plenty of oil in there. Because it's supposed to be lifetime. Lifetime sealed. I right, we got the other welch plug in and dented so it stays. And then there's also a couple uh, rubber plugs we popped in there. This holds the cotter pins and it holds the, the center. The the swing arm pin. The actual swing arm pin, yeah. So next up we're gonna now this rear part of the bike's kinda done for now. We're gonna work on putting the front end on here. And then from there we can start putting like the center stand on and the transmission. So in the bottom end. We're gonna work on trying to do that here yet in this video. So a few days went by with uh, after doing that Welsh, Welch plug part of this segment and um, on the swing arm, and they were leaking. So what we're going to do is we're going to reinstall the Welch plugs again and hope for the best and hope they don't leak. We're going to press them a little bit differently. There's about three different ways you could replace the the wicks and the Welch plugs in these in these swing arms um, and pull the swing arm off. Uh, we're going to go through that some of that stuff, but. As of right now, we're going to do this the second way, and this is going to be like pressing it while it's all together in the, with the press, and then reinstall it, and hopefully it doesn't leak this next time. So, otherwise, we're not sure what we're going to end up doing to keep it from leaking. But originally from the factory, there those welch plugs were pressed in, and they seal, and they don't leak, and there's no like O-ring or nothing holding that uh, all in, so we're just kind of like forming the welch plug around the the swing arm 
and kind of like hoping it seals. It's kind of how it's procedure is. So I'm going to go work on the, try getting it going again. We've got the swing arm and cradle laying here. We got the, it all cleaned up um, just after pulling the, the plugs out. The plugs kind of, um, oh, they're pretty easy to pull out. We pretty much just uh, drill them and then thread them and then just yank them out with like a like a slide hammer tool. We use slide hammer. Yeah, like this here. So pretty simple to get out. And then we saw the wick, or not really the wick, but the plug pieces, the felts that went in there before. We have another set now we're going to do, and we're going to soak in oil. We got it soaked in oil again. We're going to start this all over again here. But um, what happens here is when you grab the, the welch plug or a frost plug that goes in there, and and the ones that fit really well is pretty much this one here. It's, it's a Dorman, and it's a 550-017, if you can see that. Yeah, there it's better. And they just go in there, and you want to, like, concave it so we're flattened it out flatten it. so it actually kicks out Not concave it. and grips out to the side of the of the swing arm here it's supposed to go up to this shoulder right in here the wick the there's a disc wick that goes in here that lays there and then the welch plug goes up to this and pushes down on the on that the other wick goes in here and so they feed each other, and that lubricates this bushing. So with the oil, like we said before in other previous parts, the oil that we put in here now is going to be there forever because you can't add it after it's all together. So, And it's supposed to use 140 gear oil. And I've got GL4 140. So we tried it with the, um, just smashing it in with uh, while it was, the, it was all settled into the frame, and that didn't quite work out. So now this time we're going to reload it with, the, the felts yep. and then we're gonna we're gonna put it in our press yeah, and we're gonna press it yeah we got a special like uh, a pressing tool that we kind of made here and we're gonna kind of use this to smash it and actually kick out the outer, outer sides because on the ones we took out we noticed that when we kicked punched in the centers it only it only like bent the center it didn't really bend the outer sides yeah they the outside is still curved it's just dented in the center. We want to get more of the curve out here yet, too, to flatten it out straighter. So that's going to be what we're going to be doing right now. So we're going to put the felts in now and then get ready to press the one side, flip it over and press the other side. So this oil is like the same thickness as the other stuff, but it's just clearer. And we put in the same stuff earlier that was darker, but... They don't just slide right in. They should, but they don't. Yeah, because they swelled up the oil and now they're bigger. Yeah, well, and then the bad part of it is I'm trying not to squeeze all the oil out of it either. You got to somewhat thread it in there. Afterwards, I'm going to pour some oil down into it. It just doesn't want to go. Very tough to get in. It's going. It's 
kind of funny. There we go. And you got to be a little proud because that's where, uh, that's how the uh, other ones oil. Yeah, not the disc one. Yeah, not the disc one. And then that just lays down in there. Like that. We are ready for the welch plug. And the welch plug will sit right on top of this and push down. And of course, oil's going to squeeze out. It's probably a better way of doing it. But sometimes you can't just, unless you want to tear your whole bike apart to do it this way. <laughs> That's the one way you could do it, like we did the other way, if you don't have the transmission in yet and the motor in yet. Um, yeah. Okay, so here we go. Got it? Yeah. this in here. We're about to set it up. Yeah, we'll get this centered in there. Looks like it is. Yeah the diameter of that pressing tool is about three and in, or inch and three sixteenths and it's just a, like a a little bit shyer of the of the plug, the Welch plug, and just fits right inside that right inside the swing arm there. So it's gonna be able to get to the far outer edge like we wanted it to be. Let's take a look at it, see what it looks like. Yep. Flattened it a little. Should we go? I think we got room to go some more. Let's see what we did. All right, the other side turned out pretty good. Um, we're going to have to fill up the... Pour a little in here. Yeah. Uh, add some to the, the main center there. and I'll put the felts on this side too then. Yeah. I don't want to put pressure on it. 
I was just trying to look down in there, but yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to see it, but I think it's right on that edge where it goes next down. No, it's down in there a ways. Not as much went in there as I thought. Oh, it's in there now. More than I wanted in there. Oh no, it it poured down in there. See, it's it's down in there a ways. Oh yeah, yeah, we can see that. But there's plenty in there, I think. doesn't say in the book to fill it but I think with a little with a little in there it'll help uh, won't like run dry or whatever yeah it'll well and then when you squeeze this out see Well, it's the only lube it's going to get, so I mean, it's, you're not doing anything, har not any harm to it, unless, unless it leaks everywhere, <laughs> again. But. After I figured this would just slide in there, but don't. I figured that after we get done putting this in here, we have to let it sit again and see if it leaks, I guess. Hopefully not. When we were looking up torque specs, I was pretty much reading the whole section on how to do this here and I come across the, something I didn't realize, but um, the bushing that actually goes in there is different on, on a Mark III than it is on the previous years. Yeah, it's shorter. And uh, the outer, there's an outer cover is different too. It has like a, a, like a a fitting too and stuff oh it? yeah and there's a pin that goes through and then uh yeah yeah that's what you're talking about yep. the earlier ones yes yep. then you can take the, the fitting and you can add oil to them but they sometimes leak a lot they leak like these did before i took it apart
Okay, here we go. I think I got equal space all around. We're not pushing on anything. We're not getting anywhere. No. Okay. centered on the on the ram. There we go. Okay, here we go. I think. <laughs> flattened it. Oh, yeah. Cleaned it up. Could've yeah, so we, we can see here where that we got it smashed in there and uh, of course when we pressed it and kind of damaged some of the paint but we can touch that up. But it's uh, been kind of hard to avoid that. <laughs> but anyway we're just going to let it sit here for a little bit and see if it leaks I guess. By flipping it over and whatever. The last time it didn't take long and it was running down the cradle, so. Yeah. So and it was leaking out the sides. And yeah, I don't really see anything seeping out yet, so I'll let it sit though. Well, it's been sitting here for a while and it's looking like it's dry. I think we're ready to go here. Um, even in here. Where the seals at? You can tell these seals aren't leaking either because they're they're kind of dry as well. Other than whatever lube we had on it when we put it in, I greased it to slide so it slide in. Not as we were, rubber. As it was sitting here, we were kind of talking about the ones we took out. Yeah, we originally we found one of the ones that we took out. It actually had like a dent in it or something, and from a long ways back probably, and it was probably faulty back then, but. These, these two went in really well and didn't get all beat up or broke or bent or nothing. So this is uh, pretty much, we'll let it sit overnight probably and get ready to put it in the frame again. And we'll go from there. Here we are. It's been a, a couple days now and it's been sitting overnight, of course. And now a couple days later, it's not leaking. And we didn't touch nothing. Still same piece of cardboard it was sitting on. <laughs> So I think this is ready to go back in the frame now. And then we touched up some of the spots that got damaged in the paint there. But yeah, it's ready to go. All right, well, with all together like this, it's kind of a different procedure than I, than I said before. So we're going to run it in here. Got to twist it all up and pop it in there. So I forgot to mention that because 
we actually had the cradle in the last time we did it. There. Okay, now stick there the bolt are. through there. All right. Okay. So we got the swing arm and cradle assembly all in, and we got the shocks hooked up back here, and ready for the next few steps. And then we're gonna probably finish this up, but we got the. The little tool here that kind of takes the place of the motor put back in so it holds it still. And before you can really torque this down and set this, you got to put this in because these pieces fit behind here. So I have to pull these bolts and stick them through these holes. Right. So. Slides in. Those I gotta take this bolt out here. Just a minute. And this one over here too. Yep. Got it. I dropped the nut, but I can pick it up. And the lock washer. <laughs> okay. There it goes. Now the washer. The lock washer. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I got. Well, there's a special, a special shape to the nut. I should have probably showed you that, but there's like a, a rounded end, and there's like the flat end. So make sure the flat end goes towards the part you're you're tightening up to, and the rounded end goes to the outside. This is the outside. That's the inside. Okay. Yeah, that's... Yeah, all right. I was thinking this would look different than that one, but... Oh, it does. One of them... This isn't... Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yep. It's kind of like... It have the, words and stuff on it. Yeah. On it's like on the 40, it had like a machine surface on the one end, and there it didn't. But it's a little bit different than this bike. Okay. And a horn goes down in here, and the horn gets under here. Yeah, this is pretty much the end of this segment. So I hope you enjoyed everything on this. Uh, this pretty much gets the frame ready to accept the transmission and the motor. The transmission needs to go in next, then the motor. I mean, we can do that after we do the front end because we're going to do that next. But we got to. But um, anyway, we got to set this too. We got to re recheck the. Dice elastics. Yes. Okay. backed it off when we took it out and we put it right back where it was so it should be good but we'll double check it and I gotta torque it yep. to 30 foot pounds yeah this torque spec for the nuts are 30 foot pounds shooting for eight thousands. We'll see what I got here. The tight eight.
real nice. That's eight. Yeah, that's eight. So that's it. All right, cool. So I'm going to call it good. Yeah. There it is, 30 foot pounds. Well, I hope you enjoyed everything on putting this chassis together on this Norton Mark III. And uh, uh, there's more to come. Uh, just uh, we're, we're gonna be doing the next few steps in the next video, which I just talked about a little bit ago. But um, like I said, it was gonna be the transmission in the motor for sure in the front end, and getting the wheels on it so we can get this thing off the off of here and actually work on it some more. So it's nice seeing this bike go together. So I hope you enjoyed everything, and we'll see you again soon.